Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got the usual crew. We've got the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Good, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Good. We've got Eric, the technician, Peterson. What's up, Eric? How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. We've got the Bearland, Aaron. Bearland. You can see this. I, I never, I never get, I never, I never grow tired of the growl. I don't. We've got the most dangerous woman in the world, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. And then we've got Tate. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Litchfield. What's up, Tate? Hey, happy to be here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And of course, you know him. You love him. The professor, the brain, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. If you want to learn how to climb that mountain and have the Sherpa, Scott Todd, take you up there from land investing newbie all the way to land investing Jedi in only 14 weeks in real time. You're going to execute. You're going to mail. You're going to market. You're going to get results. You got to learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call and see if you're ready with the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, and learn more about flight school. All right. So this week's topic is one that we're hearing a lot. It's easy to buy, but people are having a more difficult time selling, right? And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the first issue is why you guys think that this is an issue. Because I know for everyone on this call, marketing is not an issue for us. Selling is not an issue. So why is it that way for the people in the community? Or maybe Barry Land Aaron's having a tougher time. Um, Scott Bossman, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think there are a number of reasons uh, starting out, but I, I think that um, one, of, one of the biggest issues and the biggest themes that I'm hearing in office hours calls and from flight school people and from toolkit people is that they're able to acquire land and they, they get real excited about that, but they're having a difficult time selling. And my, my question to them always is, well, what are you, you know, how are you showing up on the marketing side. Uh, and when someone says to me, well, I've set a few Craigslist ads and that's about it, then that's why they're not selling land because it's all about showing up on the back end of our business. It's all about numbers. It's all about putting in the reps on all of these platforms, Craigslist, Facebook, Zillow, Landmoto, Buyers List, and I just don't think people are putting in the reps needed in all of those different areas to get the leads that we need to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Tate, what's your take on that? It's a lot of work. I mean, it does, you're not going to sell property after spending one afternoon posting ads on Facebook or Craigslist or Landmoto. You've got to constantly be watching the market. You've got to be paying attention. You've got to be proactive with this. And it's a different type of sale. Selling a piece of raw land is completely different than selling, you know, an old computer or workout equipment. This is something totally unique. You need to know your prop, you know your property, know what you're selling, be passionate about it, and and be able to describe it in a way other than yeah, it's just uh, you know a couple acres of land out in the middle of uh, the desert off a dirt road, annual taxes are low and the monthly price is around a hundred bucks. You want to buy it? I mean, that doesn't sell land. You've got to do the hard part, which is get to know your properties. And people don't. They think, oh, I'm just going to go out and buy some cheap property and somebody's going to want it. That's not the goal here. The goal is to buy cheap property that people want. And there's- Right. A yeah, absolutely. It's not like anybody's waking up and thinking, of boy, I really like some cheap property today. No, right. It's, You've got to interrupt them. It's all about the marketing. Um, Eric, what's your take? Why are people struggling? So, I mean, there's there's a number of factors, right? I think 
number one is, is just inventory. Uh, the more property you have available, the better chance you have of selling property. So if you're marketing just a single property, it's, it's no doubt going to be harder to sell than having 10 properties to sell that are, you know, maybe different in various ways. Um, so I think that's number one. Um, number two, I think writing ads and putting ads out there is a lot of work. If you don't have a process in place, if you don't have a team in place that's doing that for you. So it's a big time investment. Um, you know, I think a lot of people just getting started, uh, maybe don't have much time available. Um, and they're still kind of learning the business. They're learning how to buy property. They're doing their own due diligence, um, et cetera. So the, the thought of having to write new ads every day, place new ads every day, it's, it could be a little overwhelming, but in all honesty, I mean, that's what it's going to take to sell property. You've got to get your ads out there. You've got to hit different markets. You've got to use different platforms and, and reach different audiences, right? All those ads should not be written for the same person. You should write ads for, you know, maybe you got a property that people might want to hunt on. Maybe they want to, you know, live on it or build a cabin or, you know, maybe, maybe it's an investment, whatever it is, but reach all those different audiences. Don't write ads that try to target every one of those people in one ad, write three different ads or 10 different ads that target those audiences. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think it just comes down to quantity, right? I mean, we, we talk about it on a regular basis. I mean, it takes somewhere around 50 leads for me to sell a property. Um, and I think that's fairly, you know, a lot of us are seeing similar numbers. So if you're putting an ad out on Craigslist today and you're not going to put another one out till next week, I mean, you're going to be waiting a long time to, to come across that buyer that's going to be interested in that property. Yeah. Yeah. Mimi, what's your take on it? Kind of what Eric was hitting on. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. So if you have had the same pricing and you're not having any luck with it, switch it up, make it a lower price with longer terms. Um, what are you doing to make it irresistible? Um, if you're doing it on Craigslist, you're not getting any luck. Are you doing it on Zillow? Are you doing it? Are you marketing on Facebook? Are you working your buyers list? Right. I was bad about this. I didn't start my buyers list till Scott twisted my arm at the end of my first year of coaching. You, Mimi, you have one month to get this done. And I sold a piece of property my second week. I had 125 people on my buyers list and the property sold in 12 hours. But you got to make it irresistible. What are you doing in December? Now's a great opportunity. No doc fee, one dollar down, no payment till 2019. Uh, you have to spend some time making it interesting and irresistible. Um, and then, when you send out your buyers list, who's reading it? Who are you following up with those people two days later um, to to Ask them, hey, I, I noticed that you're interested in this property. Uh, what is, you know, do you have any questions? What can I help you do to, or what can I do to help get you in this property? So I feel like you got to try different things, like Eric said. If you're not getting any luck on your Facebook buy sell groups, join some new ones in different areas that are still hot markets for that area, right? For that land. Um, you got to think of different things to try and get really engaged in it. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Bearline Aaron, that's a tough one to follow right there. What's, what's yeah. your take? Well, you know, I like a lot of students, I've been struggling a little bit on the sales side. And um, it's not for lack of doing the things. You know, we're on uh, Craigslist every single day, um, not just one ad, like ads and ads and ads every single day. Um, well, I should say like at least five days a week, I'm trying to make, make it seven, but right now it's at least five, um, Zillow, Facebook, buyers list, all this stuff still struggling a little bit. And what I've found is that there's, I believe there's three elements to that need to come into a line to click together and make, make it happen. And one is a uh, property in the right area. Um, you're right. Everything does sell. 
but some stuff sells slow. Now, if you need sales and you want sales to start happening faster, you need to, um, through your county research, find the areas that are going to probably move a little faster. If you're looking at unbuildable lots in a metro district, probably not going to sell real fast. You know, um, if you're looking at, you know, um, stuff that, well, just look and see what everybody else is selling. Um, and kind of model after that. So find the right properties in the right areas. Um, your marketing then um, has to speak to people. You know, um, like Tate said, you can't just throw out some facts and have somebody expect to buy. Um, you know, create those avatars and market to those people. Um, and then you got to market in the right places. So, uh, you know, if you have a desert property and you're marketing in the wrong area for people that aren't looking for a desert property, you're, you're wasting your ads. So, but the thing is, there's no, there's nothing out there to say this is and isn't uh, each of those variables that you need to do. It's different for everybody and you need to like experiment constantly and find out what those, variables are for you or you know what and get them in line because if if uh, two of them are lined up but one's not it's still not going to work well for you you need to get them all clicked in into order and then you're going to take off and I know that's going to be the case with us um, I am just right now uh, you know adjusting those variables seeing where all of a sudden they line up all green or you know the slot machine comes into order so that's my take on it all right. Awesome. Awesome. Scott Todd, what about you? So, I mean, look, there's a lot of good, good information that's covered in here, right? And it's, it's all of these things. It's one, it's a lot more ads than what you think it is. Two, it's connecting with people. Like you can throw out a hundred ads and if you generate like one lead off of a hundred ads, you're not connecting with people. And that's what it comes down to. How are you going to connect with people? Three, it comes down to follow up. When you get those leads, what is your strategy? It's not like they're going to call you up and say, hey, I want information on the property. Okay, would you like to buy it? Uh, let me think about it. I'll call you back soon. Well, newsflash, they never call you back. You have to follow up with them. You have to work the phones. You got to email them. You got to text them. You got to communicate with them. You got to hound them. You got to stalk them. You got to chase them. You got, you got to put in effort because no one's ever gonna walk up to you and just throw cash at you. And if they are, you need to be really concerned. The next thing is, are you, are you working in markets where other people are? Kind of like what Bear Len Aaron just said. Are you working in markets where other people are? And if so, why not wholesale it? Get rid of it. You don't make money holding onto this thing. I don't care, like we had, we had somebody, uh, Tate and I were talking to somebody at the last boot camp, and like they had a pro they had a property and they believed that the property was worth twelve thousand dollars. They had people offering them eight and ten thousand dollars. You're like, nah, it's worth twelve. Who says it's worth twelve? You do, big deal. You're wrong. <laughs> sell it, sell it, get rid of it, move on with life, celebrate the small wins, the small victories. And then you know what you have? Then you have momentum. You have momentum. And the more momentum you have, the more confidence you have you're going to be on fire before you know it, but it all starts with a mindset shift and a lot of other good things happening at the same time. Yeah. I love that. You, you went into, like to, into the, that McLaughlin group gear there. Like you want 12,000 wrong. <laughs> I tried. Big, big deal. You're wrong. <laughs> Who says you you're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I what everyone said, I thought, you know, this is the type of podcast that if you're listening to it and you're having a, a struggle with marketing, I would rewind and I would listen to what everyone just said again and again and again, because everyone hit on a different element of it, but all of it is right on the head. I think that mindset of hustling, right, is, is one that you have to get into. There's only two things that make you money in this business. It's the mailing and the marketing. Well, mailing is marketing. The mailing is, is phishing. You're, you're mailing, you're, you're generating interest to potential sellers. It's marketing and marketing. Those are your M&Ms. And if you're not doing, if you're not getting the results you want, something has to change. And 
you know, look, let's just be honest. Change is hard, right? It really is. But if this were easy, we'd all be Tate and we'd all be working a few hours a day making passive income and then cycling the rest of the day, right? But you got to put in your time. You got to get your reps. You're going to get better at it. But it's not, you know, like just an overnight thing. It takes time. You have to learn how to craft a strong headline. You need to generate in every ad urgency, scarcity, a clear call to action, which ultimately is going to be, you know, email me, contact me, get them on the phone. And then I like to have in every ad an anchor because we're in an inefficient market. So an anchor would be the price is 15,000 slash it and then say only 12,000 now. So they, Oh, it's 15, but I'm getting it for 12. And then like what Mimi said, make it irresistible. It's so, so important making it irresistible. But what everyone said was, was so, um, just right on. And, um, it's, it's one of these, you know, round tables that you want to go back to and listen to again and again, if, uh, you're having a difficult time with marketing. And, and then I would say, you know, Scott Bossman, what is your personal marketing mindset when you start getting into that groove of, okay, I got a property now it's time to make some money. Uh, personal marketing mindset is, I mean, I'm pre-marketing that baby uh, b- before the before the deed is signed and before it's in my name. And I will be transparent in communication with a potential seller. The other thing that I think a lot of people are losing touch with is, um, is following up with leads and getting them on the phone. Because even in the last three years, what I've noticed is three years ago, people wanted to talk to me on the phone all the time. And with text messaging and Facebook messaging and everything else, everything is becoming so digitized and so impersonal that I think it's kind of interesting when, when new beginners get into this, uh, they're having a hard time interacting with leads. And I think technology is one of the reasons why. So I would say for new people, I continue to do this. I continue to try to badger them for their phone number and to get them on the phone. Now, that doesn't mean I haven't sold properties via text and via email and via Facebook Messenger, but I think it's harder now than it was three years ago to get somebody on the phone, but you have more success there because that's where you build the relationship. That's where you help. That's where you're able to help them solve a problem with what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Eric Peterson, what's your marketing mindset? Um, Honestly, the biggest thing is just get it out there, right? Um, You've got a new property coming in. Um, hit all the marketing platforms, get your ads out there as soon as you possibly can and start, you know, bringing in the leads. Um, and like Scott said, you know, if you can get them on the phone, that's definitely something you want to seek after, um, because you're going to build that relationship and that trust on the phone better than you will any other way. I love it. I love it. Mimi, what's your mindset? Completely agree. I guess pictures and headlines so have the most effect, right? So make sure that you're spending some time on your headlines. They're engaging. Make sure you're getting some good pictures. Um, and then get it out on as many platforms as you can. Um, and be on top of it. If it's not moving, try different things. So that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Bearline Aaron. Yeah, when I get a new one, um, I like to... Uh... I like to pre, you know, I definitely pre-market um, as much as I can. Um, I have a format of pictures that I get done in my due diligence. So I've got them right away, even if I don't have the property locked down yet. Um, so we can start getting that out in our regular, um, in our regular ad rotation. Um, and when you were, when you asked the question, I, I think you were, you had asked a little bit about mindset, but um, I like to think um, when when I start marketing a property, and actually every time I put some ads out, um, I as I'm doing the ad, I'm like I'm kind of thinking this is the one that's going to sell this property. Now I don't know if it will or not, but I'm trying to and not not to be woo woo, but I'm trying to put that mental energy out with that ad. You know, I I don't know if there's anything to that, but. If nothing else, it, it makes me a positive person and uh, makes my efforts positive. 
No, I, I don't think it's woo woo. I, I think it's 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 injecting joy into the the task of marketing, and um, for some people, I think that's really important. Actually, I mean, it should be fun. It shouldn't, you know, feel like um, torture to to you know market. It should be a joyful thing and have that sort of enthusiasm. Like this is the one. I like big lots, and I cannot lie. Right. Like that's the headline that's going to win. And then, you know, injecting all those other elements into that ad. And yeah, I, I think that's great. Uh, Tate, how about you? What's your mindset? Uh, you know, it's not at all different from what anything else anyone said already. I mean, we basically get a new pro- property in and it's, you know, the mindset is all right, time to go to work. Let's sell this. Let's move this. Who do I need to call? How do I move this as quickly as possible? Do we need to highlight it for deal of the week? Who can I call previously? I mean, we are aggressive and relentless when it comes to this stuff. So I think we just get in the right headspace and know that it's going to take some hard work and that hard work will pay off with passive income. So it's worth it. Yeah. I feel like Tate, you're like the Muhammad Ali of, of marketing in the sense that like when, when you're putting out ads, right? Like Ali was famous for saying, you know, he wouldn't count his sit-ups until they started to hurt. Like all those other ones didn't count until they started to hurt. Like when you're doing your ads, like I don't think you count your ads until uh-huh. like, it's like you're in pain from posting so many. I mean, it, it's kind of true. When you think you're done posting, post a couple more, right? Like if you have extra time in this business and you don't know what to do with your time, you should be either mailing or posting ads. That's really the only thing you need to do with your free time. So post more ads. If you are doing 10 a week or 10 a day, try to see if you can do 12, 13. The more ads you do, the more efficient you'll get at doing them and the more responses you're going to have. Right. It's not like you have to be the one actually doing the posting. That can I mean, I can't. be outsourced. Now, I wouldn't outsource the writing of it necessarily in the beginning. I'd want to at least have some say, but then even that could be outsourced if, if you know you find someone who's really good at it and they're effective why not you got to cut your teeth right you got to learn the process you got to learn what people want and what uh, type of ads produce the lead so you can teach that to someone else and they can reproduce it over and over and over again right and you have to find out which channel does your property sell best on for some it's going to be craigslist for others it's going to be land moto others will be facebook buy sell groups Others will be Zillow, but you've got to know, you know, you've got to 80, 20 it because 20% of your ads are going to yield 80% of your sales. And in those channels, same thing. Um, Scott Todd, what's your marketing mindset? It's, it's just more, more of everything, right? Like you need to be everywhere. There's like, you know, you need to, you need to work all the platforms. You need as many ads as you need. Okay. Like when the phone starts ringing, what I find is a lot of people take their foot off the gas. They stop marketing. Oh my gosh, I'm going to sell all my properties. That's a bad thing. No, why? Sell them all. Sell them all. You can go get more. We've already started this conversation by saying that you can, no problem going to get land. Sell them all to one person. It doesn't matter. You can get more. But you need a lot of, you need a lot of ads. You need to think through the strategy. You got to think through who you're marketing to who you're writing this ad to and then go do it. Yeah. And if you don't, I mean, let's face it. Like like as Scott was talking and he started saying more, I immediately thought of that Geico commercial. I got more. And all of a sudden, like they just show like these ridiculous things happening in every other frame. Like the person just keeps getting bigger more and more and more. And next thing you know, like, like it's like just huge. But, um, but think about like, you know, the way Geico even markets. This is a very boring commoditized product, insurance. Yet they are the leader, you know, 15 minutes could save you 15%. And they make like, they're fun marketing people for the most boring product on earth. Like if they can sell this product, we should be able to sell land every single day with a little bit of, you know, effort. And, and creativity and make it fun, right? Just like God said, make it more um, and do more than you, than you think you should do. So 
that leads us now. I, I thought this was a, really a great podcast, but now let's put, I think, Mimi on the spot. Is it Mimi this week? Mimi, no? It's Scott. It's Scott Bossman? Yeah. Really? My guy? You can't just hand it off like that. I only, I'm, I'm only reason. saying that because Zeno's not on the, the podcast. Because I, you know, um, I like to mess with that bromance a little bit. <laughs> I'm not, um, not going to be the shiny object syndrome after this one because you guys usually kind of all make fun of me. See, that's really smart the way you're doing that. You're already <laughs> coming out. You're getting ahead of it. That's good. That's right. That's yeah. Good. yeah. All right, Scott Bossman. What is your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners? What do you got? All right. Uh, I'm going to do two, two tips of the two tips of the week. One is a mindset thing that I heard that I really like. Okay. Uh, we're all concerned about, um, making headway. Sometimes we compare ourselves to others. And, uh, as you say, Mark, comparison is a thief of happiness. Um, but the only thing you need to compete with is what you're capable of. And I, I heard that last week. I heard it also a long time ago, but, uh, it, it kind of uh, is, is making me think about next year and uh, resolutions and that type of thing and thinking about what I'm capable of a year from now and trying to envision myself in that role. And in order to do that, you need to make yourself a little bit uncomfortable. You need to, you need to be uncomfortable. You need to freak out a little bit in order to get to that point. So that's my little mindset tip of the week. And then the geeky tip that you guys will make fun of is for years, I don't know why it is. I just haven't found uh, so I'll be, I'll find an article or something and I want to read it later. So I like, I text it to myself, right? Text it to Aaron or uh, maybe, maybe I want to read it so bad that I don't put my phone down. Well, I found a uh, Insta paper this week. So it's basically a bookmark app, but it's really nice because you download it on your phone and you find an article or a video or anything that you want to save and you click, click the little share button and send it to Instapaper and you can read it at the end of the day. So uh, I've actually found myself becoming more efficient during the day because I'm wasting less time reading articles or whatever, or scrolling through articles. So I'll just share it to my Instapaper. And then at the end of the day, I'll read my uh, articles or recipes or, and I, and you can, you can sort it all out. You can put them into folders mindset uh i'm a big comics movie geek guy so i'll put that stuff in a folder and i'll put recipes in a folder scott todd knows i cook he found that out by accident recently um so anyway I, it's just a nice little organizational tool i think it's great that you know you finally discovered the interwebs yeah welcome to the 21st century scott <laughs> i know i know yeah, yeah i told I mean, you I no, I think it's great. There's also this really cool search engine called Google. <laughs> right, but I was Googling. That's not the point, Mark. I couldn't stop Googling. How's that different than Evernote Clipper? I haven't used Evernote Clipper. <laughs> he just blew his mind. Bearland Aaron blew his mind. <laughs> you you know you know it's an old tip when like Bearland Aaron's saying stuff that you know I I've got something that's even more cutting edge. Yeah, the horse told me about it a long time ago. Right. You know, people will comment on this and they th say thank you, Scott Bosman, for that tip. Of course they will. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> absolutely. See, there, Mark, therein lies the exact point behind marketing, which is, you know, there are people who, who know this stuff and there's people that don't know this stuff. And, you know, the mere fact that Scott Bossman put that out there, people are like, I knew that. What's the big deal? Well, he's continuing to educate the marketplace. And there's people that don't know, like Scott just found out, like he just found out something new too. And, Thank you know, you. he will attract people to him that appreciate that tip. And then he stands out from you and I and from everybody else. All of us know it all. It's like, you know, smart aleck remarks like, welcome to the 21st century, Tate. <laughs> Uh, exactly. I, I'm, I no. I think it's really good. I mean, Mimi, what's your thoughts on that tip of the week? I think that's great. I'm the same way. I'll just start using that and reading. I don't. I'm not a TV watcher, but I'll sit with my family in the evening while they watch that, 
but now I can sit and read through articles. That's a great idea. No, I mean, I think it's great that you found another way to ignore your family. <laughs> so thank you for that, Scott Bossman. Um, you know, it's... You know, I, I, you could even use this as a team building tool. So just, you know... Oh, Oh, right, great. Right, of course you can. Of course you I want can. My team, I want my team to see this article or this tip of the week. I mean, you throw it in the folder, they look at it. There you go. It creates discussion. Or you could hit the share button on that, uh, <laughs> that you know, <laughs> that, that ad and share it. I, but, oh, I mean, man, you're killing me. <laughs> no. No, I, no, it really is a good tip. Eric Peterson, you want to take a, a pot shot before we close? <laughs> Absolutely not. There's no bad tip. All right. Well, you know what, Scott? I, I think you can feel good about the middle row, Scott, Eric, Mimi, giving you props on that tip. So I don't think there's anything. Yeah, I, I, it is a good tip. 50-50. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It could have been a quote. I mean. There's been worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean. it. <laughs> What was Eric's? No one even. Tip? I had a mindset. I had a mindset uh, tip as well. Yeah, you had two. I tips. remember that. Yeah, Eric, I can't remember. Remember that one. What were you were roasting you about? Oh, Jot Not Pro. Jot Not Pro. <laughs> yeah, Instapaper. Thanks, Tate. <laughs> Jot Not Pro. No, I'm the, I, land, I'm the round table bully here. I gotta remember these things. A bold your reputation. Yep. I think Tate wants to do uh, all the 2019 tip of the week. I thought ready. about it. I was tempted by the offer, but you know, I, I think I'm just going to let, let you guys keep going. I mean, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think the, the title of this podcast should be, there are no bad tips. And you know, it's true. It's true. And Scott's right. Like there is someone out there that's never heard of Instapaper and, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's great. You filled in the gaps in the market. Nice job. That's Scott. right. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm just so glad Scott Todd is not going on and on like about the Microsoft surface. <laughs> <laughs> what to, to make you jealous? Yeah, absolutely. I Did love, Windows break on you already? I love, no, I'm telling you, I had more problems with my Mac than I have with this thing, knock on wood, but uh, this thing's been pretty dang good, pretty consistent. My wow. Mac would like, like the monitor would stop working. I had to unplug all the dongles and restart it and all the dongles. There's no freaking dongles to this thing. I'm telling you, it's, you know. It's nice. I'm loving it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy it's to a carry around. Yeah. It's a great business case study. I mean, even Apple, as great as they are, are not immune to, to you know, becoming comfortable, right? And not continually looking for ways to improve the, the customer experience. And Microsoft found a, a gap. And good, good on them. Another, you know, another thing to think about when you're marketing as well. See, there's all these marketing uh, things in the world that, you know, all these lessons that you can glean just every day. Anyways, I hope as listeners, you are getting a lot of value from these podcasts. And if you are, please do us three little favors. All you have to do is subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And certainly the per first person that emails support at thelandgeek.com. I love Instapaper. We're going to send them a signed book, Dirt Rich, singing the praises of Scott Bossman's tip of the week. Be the first one to do that as a little Easter egg prize. Scott, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Eric Peterson, are we good? We are good. Barrelyn Aaron? We're great. Tate? Yep. Mimi? Great. Great. Scott Bossman? Uh, I'm picking myself off the floor over here, but we're good. <laughs> All right. Great. All right. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. 
Jeez, boss man, you're killing us. Bad. It's terrible, Mark. What are you talking about? How was that terrible? That was so bad. Bossman was like 10 minutes behind everybody else. <laughs> he was an echo. You know, you were just defending the, the tip of the week, and now you're going to be hey, I, I'm, about like, the... I'm a very fair person. That should prove it. I'm a very fair person. I'll critique. Not really. He picks on the Great Lakes. That's what he does. The Great Lakes states. So ah. Scott picks on. By, by the way, are we going to give Aileen to Augustine a little love about all the jingles she's been doing? When are we doing that? Did you guys do that on Nightcap? No, we'll. I think we'll play them uh, this week on Nightcap. Thank you. You got to stop though. Yeah. I, I feel like Scott should be singing "Let Freedom Ring." Bossman, that is not Todd. Right, right. <laughs> no, well, yeah. maybe maybe we'll work. Got to respect the listeners. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's, it's getting it's getting feisty. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got to switch up coffee. See? <laughs> Making me irritable. Oh, I don't know. Man. Scott, you still drinking that Wawa coffee? From time to time, uh, you know we we got uh, we're, we're freezing over here today. It was uh, 38 this morning in Florida, and uh, so wow. yeah, I went and got a coffee. But on uh, eh, I've been trying to peel off of it a little bit because I was I had a bad addiction, Mark. I would go for uh f- like drive by it and the wall would call me i'd go get a drink and i'd get a little sample cup so every time i'd go in there, i was walking out with a little sample cup my wife's like it's bad you mean like, wawa the gas station oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean hanging out the gas station that's oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's a, way, the way Mimi just said that she just like looked up and like she's like i didn't know i was better than you yeah <laughs> Oh my Listen, god, Mimi, I, gas station coffee. Oh I went with Scott took me to the Wawa when we were in, in Florida recently. It is a fine establishment. They're it's, nice. Yeah. They're my kids cool. love it. Good it's selection. Fun. They got it was a good time. We had a great time there. I, I was in DC and I'm voxing Scott and Tate. I'm like, here, I, here I am at the Wawa. At the Wawa, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't have them out here. It's, yeah. it's a nice store. Yeah. I've never heard of them. They have like pizza bars in there. You can go get pizza. We're on the road. My kids see it. They're like, we got to stop. It's the Wawa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) But Scott, I mean, let's be honest. It's not great coffee, right? Oh, I think it's fantastic, man. I think it's, (laughs) I I put it at the level of Starbucks better. I can't surprise Starbucks, man. You got got to come over. I got to make you a Chemex, like a clean cup of coffee with like fresh beans, like the grind, the perfect amount of water. I'll, I'll convert you. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll look forward to that. All right, but it's nice to see the evolution of where you start, because you know from the diet coke into like now coffee. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I I still prefer the diet coke to the to the uh, coffee. It's okay. It's all right. I mean, it's you know, diet coke is like the insta paper of <laughs> beverages. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'll take it. Where pocket <laughs> is like the coffee. Right. Or ever Pocket's note. another one. Your pocket's another one. Whatever. I don't know. Well, anyways, thanks everybody. Uh, see everyone next week. <laughs>